Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Elena and Danielle coming your way. We wanted to reach out to you today. Uh, we're going live to talk about one thing that is on everybody's mind, especially if you are struggling with things like autoimmune conditions, because we all go, okay, the world is falling apart. My immune system is compromised. Every time we look at how many deaths there are, it's usually people who had health conditions what's happening to me, what's happening with me. So we put our heads together in my company and said, how can we help everyone do better and feel better? And we came up with a three day challenge and possibly a bonus to that, to talk about three practical steps that you can take right now, starting today at home to improve and boost your immune system so that you will not be as compromised and actually have more chances and opportunities to, to, to withstand any virus, including coronavirus as well. So welcome tonight. And Danielle, you want to say hello before we go live so people know who you are and introduce yourself to? Hello, everybody. I'm Danielle Watson, and I'm a health coach at 360, and I'm just excited about the conversation tonight. Yes. And by the way, Danielle, you did an interview, I think it was two or three weeks ago with one of our other coaches, Sophie, and you tell, told about uh, your life a little bit. And you were a person who had an autoimmune condition. Do you want to do like a two minute overview of what it was and how uh, it was resolved for you? Absolutely. So I uh, actually was a client with 360 a year ago, and I came to the table with 20 years of um, inflammatory issues, digestive issues, autoimmune issues. I had an autoimmune condition called Sjogren's. I had a ton of fatigue, a lot of brain fog. And I really had tried uh, a lot of different protocols and diets and different things to uh, alleviate my symptoms. And I was also a health coach, obviously. So I had a lot of knowledge about nutrition and a lot of other things. But for some reason, I wasn't getting well on my own. So I started the program, went through it, had tremendous success. In four months, I lost 17 pounds. I got to 86% um, improvement in six months. And I'm doing better now than I have been in 20 years. And so I am a coach here because I believe in the program and I believe in the power of it and all of the steps and sequences that I've gone through and have adopted a new lifetime lifestyle for myself. And I'm confident with you know working with other people to do the same thing. Yes, and that is fantastic premise to what we're discussing today because Danielle had an autoimmune condition, but she was able to take steps in order to negate all the things that were happening. So as of right now, neither one of us is freaking out. Oh my God, there's COVID, uh, coronavirus is spreading. Yes, we all have human concerns, but what we know from statistics right now is most people who are dealing with it are people who have compromised the immune system. So we're gonna break it down into three days, three things that we're gonna co cover because we believe that they have a majority of the weight and how your immune system responds. Namely, today, day number one, we're gonna talk about stress. And I know, I know everybody already heard about stress, how bad it is for us. Listen, we all know that smoking is bad for us, but millions are still smoking, right? So it's not that we're lacking information, we're lacking transformation. And we know that stress is bad for us, but nevertheless, we're all still doing it. So today we're gonna to talk about how stress impacts immune system. And after that, we're not gonna to take too long, just a few minutes on each uh, point here. Then we're gonna talk about practical steps that you can do and take immediately right now, starting tonight to deregulate stress so that your immune system can actually be boosted and feeling healthy. So I'm gonna dive into this for about two minutes and I'm gonna hand it off to Danielle. For me, I've done what I do now for over a decade. I used to be sick myself, had thyroid issues, pituitary infertility issues, dealt with it in the most natural way. And one of the things that I found, even though mine was not autoimmune at that time, was that my uh, immune system was still compromised. In, in order for us to have any health condition, our immune system is under attack. And for all of us, it comes from different sources and why it's happening. So for some, it could be dietary source. It could be a genetic mutation that you had that predisposes you to that, not causes it, but predisposes it. So there's not really a cause and effect, but predisposition can happen. And for a lot of us, it's stress, it's trauma. It is. It could have been stemming from your childhood early on. It could have been emotional neglect, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. It can happen that early on. And when we go into a stress response later, what happens is our stress hormones are elevated. The rest of our immune system goes, we are on the break, not the immune system, but the body goes, we're on the break right now because we're trying to survive. So all forces and all resources are 
pulled to the forefront for survival purposes. If you are in that state for an extended period of time, and if you add to that bad diet, which we will cover tomorrow, we're going to talk about immunosuppressing diets and immunoboosting diets. If you add diet to that, if you're not resting, we're going to talk about on the third day properly, um, then what happens is your body will start saying, okay, I've been at an alerted state of being for so long that I simply don't know anymore where it is my cell or an invader cell that attacks me. So I'm just going to attack everything that comes my way. So the immune system gets compromised and your body, your immune system attacks itself. That, that's what we call it autoimmune condition because your body just goes haywire, cannot tell the difference. So one of the big things that we know is trauma and stress. And right now for a lot of you going through coronavirus is traumatic. It can be traumatic because you're out of work, you're losing your income. You're cooped up in the same house with same people all the time. Your kids are on a break, not on a break. They're homeschooling. Mine is, I know, Danielle, yours are too, right? And then you have the dogs and the cats, and you cannot get anywhere to feel human, make any human connections. And you feel like you're going to lose your mind. So it is stressful, and it is also traumatic. But we take it a step further. That's when I'm going to hand it off to Danielle. And let's talk about the sources of stress that we create right now during the coronavirus outbreak. Great. Thank you, Elena. So first I'll say that um, my kids are out of school for another month. I think Elena's uh, child is out of school for the rest of the school year. And so we're all dealing with uh, the different impacts of COVID-19 uh, in our homes, in our communities, in our jobs. And I just wanna take a minute to acknowledge any uh, person who clicks on this video. And I understand that you might be a person on the side of the spectrum of high anxiety, high worry, um, high fear of the unknown, or you might be on the side of the spectrum of, I'm okay, but I'm concerned about other people. So I wanna acknowledge that both sides of the spectrum are okay, there's no right or wrong, but I think we have a great opportunity right now to um, be compassionate and empathetic towards one another and be flexible and be empowering to help one another through this challenging time. So I wanna talk about, uh, <laughs> Uh, an area that's affecting all of us right now around COVID-19, and that is the blessing and the curse of technology. And we use technology for a lot of reasons, but in this particular case, we use it to get information. We're looking for information. We're looking for statistics. We're looking for um, what's the next thing that the government's going to do? What's the next thing that businesses are going to do? And so there's a level of anxiety for some people when they use technology to get information. And, you know, I just want to take a minute to ask you, you know, where are you getting your information from today? Are you using social media? Are you watching the news all day long? Are you going to the store, you know, to the grocery store to get your toilet paper and someone talks about a worst case scenario? Are you relying on your coworkers? Where are you getting your information? And, I ask you this because I believe um, that it's a fact that we are all in charge of our thoughts. We are all in charge of deciding what information we're going to allow in and what information we're going to keep out. And we can also decide, you know, do we have a filter, right, for information? And so I want you to think about where are you getting your information? And is it something that's benefiting you today? So are you spending two hours you know, on social media looking at statistics? Are you calling friends and getting those worst case scenarios? Are you thinking about how you're gonna juggle work and homeschooling, right? So those anxiety pieces affect all of us, but how are you spending your time getting information and is that benefiting you? Is that serving you mentally, emotionally, physically? Most of you will probably say no. And I think many people are in this situation. And so we want to help you tonight to figure out how to determine what's weighing you down, to empower you that you have a role to play in controlling your thoughts and in controlling what information you're allowing in and what information you are keeping out, right? We all need a filter because without a filter, guess what happens? We read an article or we see a video no filter that all of that information and all of the opinions that come along with it go straight through into our minds, into our hormones, into our, our stress receptors, and it causes a lot of havoc to be wreaked in our bodies. And so 
we really need to make a decision about what filters we're gonna put in place and what boundaries we're gonna put in place to protect ourselves. So let's think about another aspect of this, not just the fight or flight or freeze response, but also let's think about different personalities. Uh, you know, watching this video, we're gonna have some people who are empaths, right? They're empathetic, they feel energy deeply. Those might be the people who shouldn't watch a lot of news. Maybe they should have uh, some limits on the number of hours or minutes that are spent getting information. Maybe you need to make a list of your sources of information and say, you know what, from now on, this is where I will go for information and nowhere else. And I will spend this amount of time. And this is what process I will go through to translate that information through my filter in a healthy way. I get facts. I, I translate that into the truth and then I don't buy into all of the emotions and the opinions that come along with that information. If you're someone who's uh, analytical and you like to do research and it doesn't stress you out a whole lot to actually get information, great. You have to decide what's healthy for you. But if you're analytical and you're one of those people who likes to share information with other people, you have to make sure that you have facts that you are sharing, and you may be sharing with an empath or someone who's a nurturer, right? So you need to make sure that the information that comes into you, uh, into your mind, is filtered so that you can share fact-based information without opinions and subjectivity and fear of the unknown to other people. So that's my second tip. And um, may I interject into this because this is kind of making me laugh and cry at the same time because I'm one of those analytical people. So for me, people right now, oh my God, oh my God, the sky is falling. I'm going, what does the statistics say? What do, does the math say? I go in and there's an, a page I go daily and I see how many people contracted COVID and how many people are dying. I go, well, is it a relative or an absolute number? So for me, numbers are everything. But I think what you brought up is a really, really great point. What, there is 8 billion people on the planet and all of us have an interpretation of truth. You know, the reason that we have so many religions is uh, even if you look in Christianity, there's one Bible, but so many uh, branches of how you can interpret it. Uh, right now, this is exactly what's going on with coronavirus. Wouldn't you agree, Danielle? Is okay. People are going to go, how do we interpret it? The, it was a couple of weeks ago. I posted statistics. I didn't share an opinion. All I said, these are statistics. We're going to make it. People got upset over it. And I was like, okay, let's not share statistics. We're going to just say, <laughs> we're going to feel better. Because everybody processes life differently. If we're not careful, our common sense approach and our need to educate others is going to overwhelm other people. And what we need to do, I think, to, to uh, I know I'm kind of jumping ahead of time because you're going to give us practical steps to, to implement here. But one of the things that we need to practice is right now, everybody's like, we need to be at least six feet apart. I think that we need to implement in the social media, but we need to translate it into some digital distance saying that we need to be at least six degrees apart and not influence people in a hysterical way. Yeah. Um, I think that you brought up social media. Some of you are on groups and pages where everybody is like, the world is coming to an end. The world, and you go, oh my God, it is truly. So now I just said that I'm a very, I consider myself analytical, rational person. If you spend enough time around me, you're going to see it. I even argue this way. I'm like, is the argument over? Can we move forward? So it's easier for me. But what we see right now is there's too much of that. And I got on social media, it was uh, I think last week or the first week they were shutting down schools. Five minutes later, as analytical as I am, I was like, oh my God, my heart is beating faster. I'm like, okay, am, am I, I know I'm taking it seriously. I mean, for Christ's sake, we're at home right now with my family. We're not going much anywhere. Like, should we do anything else? So it, the hysteria, the fear can spread on you. So I think that we really need to build the six degrees of separation that don't be on every group and do what Danielle is saying is, Pick a source, one source, two sources maybe, but don't go everywhere because 8 billion people will have 8 billion ways to interpret the truth that is happening. And to some people, truth for me would be like, what is an absolute number? What is a relative number? To some people like, oh my God, you know, 17,000 people died. And I look at it on a global uh, perspective, like in comparison to our global population, how many? For me, that brings me peace. Doesn't make me ignorant. It doesn't make me say we're gonna avoid the reality, but what it does, this is how I deal with my reality. So for each person is different. I really appreciate, Danielle, that you brought up that it needs to be also specific to your personality. Me, 
I'd be like, okay, done out for some people who is an empath and they're walking around people who can feel other things, even though they're six feet apart on either side, by being online all the time, they can go into a hyper anxiety mode. Mm-hmm. But sorry for an interrupting. I want to, I want you to take it back. <laughs> oh man, that was really good. And you know, what's funny is I watched a video yesterday about the personalities. It's uh, we'll have to share the link, but it's about the Enneagram, which is a personality type. There's, mm-hmm. there's nine different personality types. And the video is a comical video breaking down how people respond to, you know, an emergency. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm the Enneagram seven. And so I'm more optimistic. So, you know, the, the guy showing himself dancing in the middle of chaos, right? Because that's his personality type and others are a little bit more serious, more analytical, more practical, more nurturing towards others. And so understand your personality type, figure out uh, what that personality type does in moments of stress, but what does a healthy version of that personality type look like and how do you get there? What can you do to get to a healthy version of your personality type? Does it mean writing down information and then writing down what thought you have about that information and how you're going to translate it and deciding what the truth really is? Does it mean that you go to the uh, COVID-19 statistics website and you look at how many people are healing and recovering from it? Mm -hmm. How many people have mild cases, right? So I I think it's an important thing for us to separate the the disease and the virus from the fear and the impact to our worlds and our conveniences. Both of those are important to know. We need facts about the virus, where it is, how it's growing and all of that. But also independent of the virus, there's this fear that's been raised and increased about schools closing and and toilet paper shortages and hospitals that are being uh, strained and healthcare workers. And so I think All of us, regardless of the personality type, have a a great opportunity to be in charge of our thoughts and how we're going to show up during this time of difficulty. Think about yourself, you know, six months from now. What will she or he say about the you today? Will he or she say, wow, you really grew as a result of that. You really handled that that chaos in a really... A strong, powerful way. You really grew emotionally as a result of that. You got stronger. You got more faithful. You got more joyful. Um, this is an opportunity for all of us to do that. And I think, you know, we've got time, right? We're all home. We're all social distancing. So we have time to practice looking for good news, putting filters in place, setting those boundaries, mm-hmm. understanding our personality types, and really getting into a groove with our best selves. Right. And my devil's advocate wants to jump out and say, but, 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 but everybody's afraid, Danielle. It's not, again, it's devil's advocate. That's not my nature. But what yeah. I love that you brought up, and this is one of the points I wanted to make today, is looking for opportunities. I don't know where it started, where I had seen it, but I think that it was during bubonic plague that Isaac Newton was also quarantined from going to, to college. And he was sitting under the tree. The, you know, the whole idea is he discovers gravity. Now, if there was no bubonic plane, could he have gotten to it? Yeah, but now in isolation where there was nothing to do, and thankfully there was no social media, he was just contemplating a life, contemplating on math and science, and it became an opportunity. And he goes down in history as one of the greatest people ever lived. Now, if we only see coronavirus situation right now and the lockdown as a negative experience, that's exactly what we're going to have. I'm sure that during the bubonic plague, there were a lot of people who were like, this is crap. I wish it didn't happen. And we're, we're all, we all have fears and anger. We have all that. But to look for say, into saying, yes, it seems like we're falling apart, but here's the invitation. As a humanity, we have been through this many, many times over. There were so many outbreaks and so many viruses going on in every life that is lost right now is a precious life. So I'm not negating that. But what I'm saying is we survived it so in such a stellar way that we didn't decrease the number, we're increasing the number. And I know there's a, a joke going around right now, Danielle, that with all the people being locked up and a couple staying at home, that there will be a uh, spurt of, of pregnancies coming up or an increase. And maybe, the, you know, the, the best part about this is where there will be a lot of new lives born to. So while it is a thing that we are taking seriously, we also need to look at 
How do we process this? And yesterday, Danielle, you brought up a great point when we're chit-chatted about how we want this conversation to go. You said, uh, we need to become gatekeepers. Could you take a few minutes and, and got, kind of go into how can we be gatekeepers of what is coming in and gatekeepers of how the stress levels can differ from per person to person based on what we do? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of piggybacking on what I said regarding a filter, I'm a big advocate of uh, creating a, a process of being a gatekeeper for our brains, our minds, because if we are not, if we don't have gatekeeping abilities in place, information, energy, negativity can all come in and overwhelm us and take over us and limit us from being our best selves, limiting us from uh, giving to our families and taking care of the things that we need to take care of. And, and having that fear and giving into that fear is not benefiting us. We're not running from a saber tooth tiger for five minutes where we need that adrenaline to be rushing through our bodies we actually have time and space to be able to process things uh, logically. And so being a gatekeeper to me is about uh, processing life in a way that is, that is truthful, that is honest to who I am, and that makes a, a conscious decision to decide what can come in and what will stay out. And a conscious decision on what will stay in from a gratitude perspective. So, you know, I think about where I've been over the last couple of weeks, uh, personally, in my house, right? If I think about things that I want to stay in my gate, I want the fact that I taught my son how to make homemade chocolate chip cookies. They're, he they're healthy. I think I use gluten-free flour, but right? <laughs> so I want that to stay in. 94% uh, of the cases of COVID-19 have mild symptoms. I want that to stay in. China has closed their last coronavirus hospital. I want that to stay in. What do I want to stay out? Oh my gosh, you know, we ran out of toilet paper. Um, you know, how much longer is this gonna take for the schools? I can't figure out, you know, what's going on with my kid's school, can you? Um, the numbers are rising. I went to the Weather Channel website yesterday to look at the weather to see if I could take my kids on a walk. It was gonna be sunny. And the first article said, COVID-19 getting worse by the day or something along those lines. And I just thought, wow, the weather website has that? that? That's the first thing I see when I'm trying to check the forecast. So that's an example of something that cannot get in my gate. I did not click on that article. I decided it wasn't appropriate. Why? Because I have the information sources that I need to have to get the facts and everything else doesn't have a place in my gate. So I think we are all inundated with information. Our phones, our computers, our neighbors, right? TVs, and we have to make a decision to set those boundaries for ourselves, for our own sanity. Because even if you watched the news 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you would not be informed enough, you would not be calm enough, you would not be peaceful enough, Nothing will satisfy that urge to figure out how to resolve this anxiety unless you decide to shift your thinking, shift the way you are being, and focus on some more positive things. I know we'll get to that in a minute, but um, one of the things I wanted to mention before we move on is along the lines of being a gatekeeper is there's a website I really like. Um, it's called the Good News Network. And this is a website that was started by uh, someone who was a journalist and realized that the news was so negative, 99% negative. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to, to make a change to that. So she ended up creating this good news network, looking all around the world for good news stories. And so they have these little podcasts about COVID-19 and good news, you know, and even though you have to really search for that information, you almost, it's like you're in a scavenger hunt sometimes to find the good news. Make it a, a, an effort, uh, you know, a concerted effort for all of us to really look for good news, whether it's small or big, in our lives right now as we get through this time, as we work through the unknowns. Let's celebrate what's true, what's, what's good, what's happening, process information through a filter, and, you know, be the gatekeeper for our minds. 
And that's a great point. And I think one of the things that we are not careful because we're so bored that most of us are staying at home right now. Okay, I don't have a free minute. I actually had some tragedy that happened here. I have a uh, standing desk for I have I saw I have a treadmill desk. And I try to walk when I work, sometimes not productive. So I regretted doing that. I should have just bought the standing desk. But my desk that is supposed to go up and down broke down and I can only stand. But this is what happens. Watch. That's oh. what I have. <laughs> so I had to get a booster stool just to stand tall enough to be here. So, you know, tragedy. But for a lot of us, um, what I think we do is we create tragedy and we'll look for it on purpose. Um, there are a lot of right now, celebrities are pitching in, politicians are talking, and people who have no business talking about this are talking. So to go after what Daniela is saying, be really, 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 really careful who is speaking into your life. Get facts, and if you cannot get facts, just do the best that you can. Downgrade your, your nervous system and know that right now, only people who have extremely compromised immune systems are going to be at a higher risk. The rest of us, like Danielle said, I just looked on the website. Uh, where there's a world meter for coronavirus, basically. 5% are considered right now of active cases to be serious or critical. 95% chance of you actually not having any serious effects of that. So that's a big relief. And you're going, oh my God, facts speak volumes. And uh, China, I, I don't know exactly the date when it started in China. China's bell curve is flattening and actually going down at this point. Now we are going to go through the same thing. We're doing a lot of the same things and we're going to be closing our stuff soon. So I, I, like, I need to be a prophet going to predictions. But I would like for us to all see that within four weeks, we're going to be on the side where we're going to say, you know what, the worst is over. But that's all to say that we're acknowledging that we're filled with stress right now. Stress is bad, kind of like smoking, kind of like drinking and driving. But most of us don't stop doing it. I am. Um, no, most people just don't know how to because it's addiction. We know that social media is very addicting. You can put your cell phone down, your the kid is talking to you, and two minutes, seconds later, you're like, oh, you're reaching for something. Your brain created a uh, discipline of sorts, an addiction. So there are practical ways that we're going to talk to you about now that you can take in order to start deregulating stress. So practical ones, uh, if you can kick off Danielle with the simple ones with social media information, but then I'll take us into more practical ones that you can do at home immediately and on the spot too. Yeah, absolutely. So the first one for social media, like I said before, is really just to understand your personality type and how you like to get information in a way that's beneficial to you. Uh, setting up a filter and a gatekeeper system to decide what information you're going to allow in, what information you will not allow in. And then also find your sources of information. Find your sources of fact-based information about this pandemic and find your sources of good information. Good News Network, um, you can also you know, look for ways to um, transfer time from anxiety to focusing on healthcare workers and grocery store workers and sending good intentions to them. You know, what do they need? There's a, a lady in a nursing home who actually spent time, she was bored, and she spent time creating masks. They had cloth and they started creating masks, right? So Use that time more productively. Think about how you can spend your time in a more productive manner instead of being stuck in this kind of social media world. And also just kind of a final note on this topic and then we can move on is social media is an infinite platform of information. So you can never scroll to the bottom. <laughs> So true. Never... <laughs> and so, so uh, even some websites are built that way. This is so true. I went in the website to get my uh, desktop, that desk fix. I'm like scrolling and they're loading more and more. I'm like, I just need to get to the bottom to find a contact <laughs> page. And you just can't do that. You are stuck as a, like a sucker to world. Like, Oh my God, let me out. But you can't, you yeah, are, you that can. is so correct. Yeah. So how can you put special limitations in your scrolling to prevent uh, unnecessary anxiety and to protect yourself and to use your time more wisely. So sometimes I'll scroll through and say, I'm going to look at three more stories and I'm done. Or I'll look at three YouTube videos, or I'm going to, I'm going to scream and cry and pout for five minutes. And that's it. When that five minutes is over, I'm moving on to something more productive. 
put limitations in place. And limitations don't have to be a bad thing. They can be a freeing thing, right? When I say limitations, I don't mean, um, I don't come from a place of judgment or criticism. I come from a place of empowerment. How can you put uh, healthy boundaries around your searches for information, your use of social media, so that you can protect your mind, so that you can be better for your family, better for your community, and so that you can grow through this process? Yeah, fantastic. And yes, timers. Timers are great. If you're going to use your cell phone, use it for timers. Yep. Now, let, let's focus on other things. So let's say that you misbehaved or somebody, and you went on social media, and you're having an anxiety attack, or somebody knocks on the door, calls you, says, did you hear, Danielle, what happened? Here's my big thing is, first of all, hang up, disconnect. Second of all, we're going to give you a simple breathing exercise right now that can work magically. And I've done yoga in the past. I'm a yoga instructor in my previous life. And this is something I do even when my daughter goes, if she's misbehaved or she's in trouble and she goes into this, oh my God, oh my God, the sky is falling out. Always before we do anything else, I grab her, I hold her, I say, breathe, just breathe. So we go deep breath in through your nose if you can. And you hold it and you allow that oxygen just to rush everywhere through your body. And you go, and inside my brain goes, I breathe in freedom. I exhale worry. I breathe in freedom or calmness, whatever you can substitute and make your mantra. Normally about 10 to 20 seconds of this, you already are going to start feeling calmer. So first step is we're not going to go tell you, okay, go meditate. You can't meditate if your amygdala, your, your subconscious mind, your, your, your brain, your animal lizard brain is, is hijacked. You want to go, we need to deregulate. We need to take the power back. So amygdala, it's right there. It's get hijacked when we are in hyperactive mode. So whether it is just COVID that you're dealing with right now, or if you have anxiety attacks or panic attacks, that's what happens where all reason is wiped out and you go into your lizard brain for survival. The only way to do it is to not argue with it. But Elena said, but Danielle said, it doesn't work. It's simple negotiation by let me breathe, oxygenate my body. As oxygen is rushing through your veins, your heart rate is slowing down. All of a sudden, your common sense is coming back. And this is where you can thrive. So you go, okay, I'm breathing, deep breath in, deep breath out, disconnecting, turning off my cell phone, walking away from people who are negative. You can't do it. I actually, Danielle, have physiologically, physically walked away from people. Uh, I don't love gossip. If I hear people gossip, I'll be like... See you later. Bye-bye. And I walk away. No shame in my game because I'm protecting myself. So I'm not sensitive over other people's sensitivities. It's a bonus for my personality type. But this is something you should do right now. And I know when we go to grocery stores, at least in Texas now, they already um, implemented the six-foot rule, right? You have to be at least six feet apart from the person behind you and in front of you. And you go and you still have that. You hear people talk and Anxiety sets in, put uh, noise canceling earphones on if you need to, earplugs in, you're moving at the speed of when the line is moving. Go in times when most people don't shop early in the morning or uh, in the afternoon because some people are still working. So those are practical steps that you can actually take. And another big one, and this is why we actually use it with our clients at all times, not just during virus outbreaks, but we believe in the power of gratitude. And we go, kind of like I mentioned, Isaac Newton discovered gravity at this point. We go, what am I grateful for? And the gratitude can start with simple things. I usually, when we sit down at the table, especially now when people are going, oh my God, what's in the grocery stores? And I shopped enough to last the week at a time. We sit down and say, aren't we all grateful that we have food on the table and that's nourishing? Aren't we grateful that our immune system is strong? Aren't we grateful that we have over 95% chance of never getting this uh, thing at all? Actually, it's probably more. So it's not 96, it's 95% for people who contracted are mild. I can actually run numbers and tell you how much it is out of whole population, right? I think there's a half a million people right now, half a billion people, no, oh, half a million people who have this. And this is a drop in the bucket. Doesn't mean it's not spreading. Doesn't mean that we negate all of the facts. But if I take 525,000 cases and we look at 8 billion people on the planet, if you allow me, I'm going to give you statistics right now. That is six one thousandth of 1% of human population is affected right now by coronavirus. So I'm going to let it sink in. Six one thousandth of one percent. 
Those are your chances right now as of today to get that. That means you have higher chances of dying in a car accident or you know something falling out of a sky than this. Now, it doesn't mean that we're irresponsible. We're just introducing facts. But gratitude can be here. There is only that much of a chance of me getting it and even a smaller chance of me dying from it. And you go there and with the moment when you go in gratitude and not only flip-flopping our gums, but actually feeling the gratitude is kind of like oxygen it goes into your extremities, in your body, in your organs and go, I can breathe again. And the moment you do this, ladies and gents, what happens is your nervous system, it deregulates stress. So the hormones of stress are coming down and now your regular hormone production is going up. We use gratitude as one of the tools in the 360 degree impact health program for us to re-regulate the proper immune system uh, and hormonal production. And when we do this, the body goes, I know how to function now. I'm no longer surviving. I'm thriving. I'm thriving. I'm thriving. The more gratitude you can do, we have a, a rule, me, I have uh, my grat gratitude journal where I write in physically. It's actually better than typing it out. And I take it with me everywhere I go. If we're going to go on a trip, if we're traveling somewhere, it comes with me. Even if you spend 30 seconds of gratitude every hour where you get hit with anxiety, you're going to bring your nervous system right down where it belongs. So if you already kind of, Danielle alluded to that, like how often do you get hit with anxiety or worry or fear? There might be a pattern. And when you feel it coming up, breathe. Bring your gratitudes in and you go, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. If we all, all 8 billion people of us right now did that, I can bet that by re-regulating our immune system, what we could do is we can actually slow the spread of viruses in addition to staying at homes and washing your hands or whatever else that you're doing. But the, the uh, hysteria that we have going over the global subside and we can think clearly and we can think about facts because fear does not think about facts. Fear only feeds off of emotions. But if we think about facts, we can only do it from a place of calmness. So our big invitation today is going to be, these are the practical steps you can take, and this is going to be your homework. Tomorrow we're gonna to go live at the same time, four central, which is two Pacific, five Eastern time. We're going to talk about a diet that can be helping you to boost your immune system. But for today, between today and tomorrow, you got 24 hours to practice it. So what I want you to do right now, ladies, actually grab a pen and a paper and write this down. First, identify your sources of stress. Very, very simple. Second, which Danielle, you alluded to, you, you taught us on today is create gatekeeper uh, steps in order to filter things out that should not be stressing you. Third, what we're doing here is we're going to realize that we are in control by first breathe. So breathe, breathe, breathe. Oxygen in the body is a calm heart, a slower heart rate. We're not freaking out. And then get into gratitude and think about all the grateful, great things that your body is doing. And that you get to spend time indoors with your family. For me, I had years of infertility. So right now I just spend extra time with my kid, although we drive each other crazy sometimes. It's like, oh my God, she's no longer gone all day. She can be around me. I can see her so many more times. I can walk out every hour just to look at her. Or you get, can get to know your spouse, or you can be more passionate and lovemaking with your spouse because you're finally together. I mean, there's so many things to be grateful for. And yes, I know it is a reality that some people are short on money right now, short on supplies. But I can tell you this, by freaking out over this and going into a fear mode, it's not going to take it away anyway. We have the same 24 hours in the day as everyone else. We can uh, choose to either say, oh my God, I'm going to be homeless or say, okay, universe, I'm open, send some business ideas that I can do online right now, or that I can do as soon as the doors to my house opens up and I can go and do whatever I need to look for opportunities. Because sometimes I think that when we have tragedy, tragedy is a breeding ground for opportunities. And when we see opportunities in everything is that's when we succeed. So identify your stressors, breathe, disconnect from things that stress you. So implement gatekeeper practices, go into gratitude. And lastly, you're going to look for opportunities during the season. Four things that we'd like for you to do in the next 24 hours. Tomorrow, when we come back live again on this page and this groups where you're watching us, we're going to talk about in 
immune system diet that allowed Danielle to reverse her condition, me and thousands of our clients that also can allow you to improve and strengthen your immune system. And God knows, maybe even allow your autoimmune condition to downgrade and you start to heal yourself at that time. That's it for me today, Danielle. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add? I just have one final thought. Uh, thank you to everybody who's watched the video. And one thing I want to say is, we will never have more time than we have right now to be grateful and to get through this. We're social distancing, we're home. You know, most of us are not in an office unless you're a healthcare worker. You have more time now to be grateful, to focus on family, to focus on deep breathing, you know, to focus on joy and all the things that help to kind of raise your vibration than you had when you had soccer games going on and other priorities and other things we were running here and there. So just remember that you have time right now to focus on practicing these things. And um, we wish you all the best and we'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. So log in to the, tomorrow, same time, same place. We'll talk about a very important thing that you're going to do since all of us are staying home and eating a lot of homemade meals. And we are going to make sure that you have all the tools that you need in order to start feeling better immediately. This is Elaine and Danielle signing off, wishing you a fantastic rest of the night. Night.